living sustainably has become such a popular way of living. Aside being able to be self-sufficient and not having to rely on other people, it's also better for your health and generally better for the environment as well. In today's video, I'm going to be speaking to a lovely young couple who live right here in Accra, Ghana. And look behind me. You would think I'm in the eastern region or something. Look what they've done with their compound. They're doing so many amazing things on this land in order to live sustainably without having to rely on external resources. So don't go anywhere, give me a thumbs up. Let's get to know them a little bit and then we'll get to tour their beautiful space as well. Stay tuned and let's get right into it. intimidated by growing food oh i don't have a green thumb there's nothing like a green thumb it's beautiful you guys have a little piece of heaven yeah everything you grow is actually our grocery list i think this is also unique because you guys are like a young couple as well yes because so it's common when people are a little bit older a little more experienced they know what's i guess better for them i guess yeah so they tend to choose this type of lifestyle yeah but usually people your age and even even in the uk gardening is for like retired yeah, people yeah. <laughs> guys i've got rebecca and i've got thomas here with me they're the owners of this beautiful property we're sitting on today we're going to get to know them a little bit as i said to you earlier on hi rebecca hi hello thomas. Jasmine. Hi. 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 We're, we're doing very well that's good could you introduce yourself to my subscribers okay so i'm rebecca loring asset collins <laughs> former baker now turn oh. full-time home gardener oh, so lovely, lovely. and also make videos about what we do and put them on social media as okay. well yeah, what I, about you too? yeah I'm, I'm thomas thomas uh -huh. collins we are married this is my partner <laughs> okay. um we're sort of i guess business partners as well okay. we ran a bakery for a while together and now we're doing this wow yeah. that's like a massive transition yeah so what led you into this how did you move from baking into this I've always sort of had a bit of connection with nature to some degree based on how I was raised. So I actually, I was born on this property. It was very different, but it was still very wild. Uh, my granddad originally had this property and he went into agriculture. And so even though that, when I was born, it wasn't actually like a commercial farm or anything. There was still a lot of agriculture going on. Okay. My mom was gardening and that kind of thing. So plantain, bananas, cassava, corn. That kind of thing and then i grew up i moved to lagon mm -hmm. um, my mom kept gardening in lagon okay. so that never stopped right. and fast forward i went into computer engineering fast forward again i went into business business finally led me into baking with you know becky mm -hmm. and then finally this happened okay. and it was a bit of necessity the yeah. two things that happened was first in 2020 COVID happened yeah. i think COVID changed the lives of a lot of people yeah, yeah. right so i mean when you watch different people's interviews and things, you realize that it was like a turning point mm. in people's lives. Yeah. And it was a bit of a turning point for us as well. Uh, we became very interested in our health at that point in time. You know, we were making a lot of changes. How can we eat more healthy and, you know, stay healthy? Yeah. And that led us a bit into food. Okay. So we started, I started initially with, I think, sweet potatoes. Yeah. And I was so encouraged, you know, with sweet potatoes because they were very easy to grow. <laughs> very resilient. Oh, really? yeah. okay. I mean, we used really bad soil. I mean, <laughs> literally just sand. It. Right, and right. it just, it grew. We got an amazing harvest. Okay. And it was a really good encouragement. Right. So it got us into this gardening type mm -hmm. of thing. Little by little, I guess over the years, we did a little more. So I think the following year, we were so encouraged. We started doing like a... I guess you could call it like the equivalent of a container garden, but in sort of a four by four square, oh. right? And off the ground. Okay. So I say container gardening because it's not actually connected to the ground. The ground, yeah. yeah. And that was really good. We mm. did, I think, uh, tomatoes for the yeah. first time, a bit of cabbage, 
some radishes, cabbages, yeah. some yeah. lettuce. And they all, you got a good house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. We got, and I, it wasn't just by luck. I did a bit of reading. Oh, okay. Um, I followed a book called, um, I think it was a book by Mel Bartholomew, and it was called Square Foot Gardening. Oh, okay. And it basically gave the introduction of if you want a garden, you know, you can do compost, how to make a nice soil blend. Mm. Um, I've moved away from that, though, but it was a really good start. Yeah. You know, okay. and again, all this time we were baking. Mm. This, that was our way of like you know earning a living earning money okay yeah. so we kept baking and baking and about 2022 basically our business crashed oh. you know the economic climate in ghana changed, changed. Okay. and our businesses were such that it was one of i guess the first kinds of businesses yeah. to really feel the not effect a, not an essential like oh. yeah you know. Was a, it, what were you selling? What was so we're doing a lot of desserts, desserts actually. Yeah. Okay. Cakes, ah, cookies. Yeah, okay. yeah the exactly. things you don't buy right. when On you're... Yeah. Yeah, when you're broke, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You buy <laughs> bread and tomatoes. Right, right. Okay. And so all of that really dried up. I think yeah. our last real business was like December 2022. Yeah. Oh. And that was it. I mean, literally, wow. the business just ceased. Mm. We basically realized that, you know, we would have to think about something else. But we decided to put it on pause. Yeah because we had a, a baby coming okay. so we took a break for okay. nine months basically yeah. and then we had our baby and in the, all of that time we felt you know we were already approaching like this gardening thing with the mindset to be self-sustaining mm. right and to have it in a, a way that is that uses more of the resources we have on hand and okay. not to bring in a lot of heavy inputs right we didn't think too much about it but we thought about it in a little bit of the time that we had okay. around that time okay. And so just around the time our daughter was born, Becky was like, you know, we should really get back into it. Yeah. So she gave me a lot of like motivation, mm -hmm. you know, we can do it, yeah. you know, even with our baby and all of that. Right. And so we did the biggest we've ever done here. Oh. And so I think before now we had three garden beds, mm -hmm. eight by four. Mm -hmm. And I think now we've got how many? About 11, 12, 12, yeah. 12, okay. 12 of them. Wow. And we did that this year you okay. know just within the last couple of months okay. so we're racing to get everything ready <laughs> for the peak that's season. why i told you that yeah. oh we just started yeah, so yeah. Yeah. come later Wait, yeah yeah, yeah, fair yeah. and our philosophy has sort of transformed and changed we've moved away from that sort of raised bed approach there's nothing wrong with it when you're starting it's always okay. good to grow your own food okay. nothing beats that yeah. tasting your own food is amazing yeah. but we just became more interested in how can we do this sustainably mm. you know and what I mean by sustainably is how can I continue to do this with the resources I have without having to, you know, get money to go take resources from some other place right, okay. and bring it in here. Yeah, sure, you know, sure. what do I have here that can allow me to still that. grow yeah. a lot of food mm -hmm. without having to rely on some other place or right, some other person, right, you know. Yeah, sure. And so started reading more, doing more. And it's still an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. We've broken it into two stages. We've got like the planned garden, which mm -hmm. has like raised beds. And then we have like the agroforestry garden. We are trying to grow trees and grow crops between trees. Oh, yeah. okay. It's, I think it's actually called uh, syntropic agriculture. You're going to be an yeah. expert by the end. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what we're working with now. And the idea is basically to use the trees as the fodder for the soil okay. so you're growing fast growing trees mm. pioneer trees and you are chopping and dropping all of that good stuff oh. back down to the ground right. and we have pretty bad soil here you know like it's starting with okay. it's lacerite mm. like lacerite isn't like the best soil in the world oh, okay. right it's very low in organic matter okay. it compacts very easily okay. and stuff like that right. so it's very essential to like really build up the soil if you want to like grow extra things right, without okay. having so much input okay. and when i mean input i mean basically anything like fertilizer mm. we're using stuff like um, com um compost, compost because we're yeah. an organic yeah. we, we've always always been organic mm. like right from the beginning mm. but um compost cocoa peat was what we're using a lot okay. of we started making our own compost from kitchen waste okay and that helped yeah but from my experience and my gardening style i'm a bit of a lazy gardener right <laughs> so i want to have a setup that doesn't involve too much work okay. I, I want to come into the garden and enjoy my garden more right. than do so Spend much work right, right. you know mm -hmm. and so some of the ways we've, we've we've decided to go towards now is to use just the leaf litter as mulch oh, it breaks okay. down you know but it takes a long time okay. but it breaks down and some plants don't like that yeah. you know they want a lot of like you know fertilizer compost right. kind of thing and so it led me down another rabbit hole 
there has to be a better way to grow food mm. than this. You know, what were people doing before? Mm. All of this kind of, it's not really sustainable. Yeah. And if you, if you do like a little YouTube hop mm -hmm. you, and you speak to, and you look at people gardening, mm -hmm. you see that it's a trend. Right. It's very high input. Right. Very high. You're or buying fertilizer, buying compost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, buy, mm -hmm. buying fertilizer, that kind of thing. Yeah. Pesticides, etc. So the final thing that we're now doing is that we're actually doing something called adaptation gardening. Oh. That's where we are currently in our journey. Okay. And I, we feel that this is finally where we want to be with sustainable gardening. Okay. And what it is, is basically taking your first group of crops mm -hmm. and growing as many varieties as possible. Of that group. Of that. Okay. So if it's tomatoes, get as many varieties okay. as you can, whether they're from the market, mm -hmm. whether you buy seeds from a seed shop. Right. And just grow as many as you can. Okay. Some will die. In fact, actually, a lot will die. Mm. But a few will survive. Right, okay. And the few that do survive, you save seeds. Yeah. And when you save the seeds and you grow from them the next time, the next round of plants are actually going to be way better than even the first okay. set of plants. Right, okay. And it's because the plants actually slightly adapt to the environment. Mm -hmm. You do this two, three, four times, and you've got basically that crop growing it excellently well your environment where exactly, exactly. Ah, becomes adaptable okay. exactly. but the cost is time right right because it takes so, a long time to get time. to that point and yeah. and this is why we've got a bit of a baby setup where mm -hmm. we have nets mm -hmm. we still use a bit of compost but not as much as we used to before okay. and then we've got our wild spots where we're just throwing things <laughs> okay to see what comes up exactly, exactly. Right. yeah and so Survival we've got these two the, yeah, the fittest. Fittest. Okay, yeah. and so that's where we are now and okay. um we still are able to provide some food mm -hmm. for ourselves but not nearly as much as we would like okay but we know that it's going to get better every year yeah, sure, sure. amazing what about you rebecca how did you what was your contribution in all this? How did you <laughs> what was my out? contribution? Very, very big contribution, actually. At first, I was his assistant, okay. and I used to um, take photos and document the stuff. Okay. But then as time went on, I was like, man, I need to learn how to do this thing. Right. I can't always be relying on him to right. grow all right. the stuff. So I basically got him to teach me. Okay, so and you then, were also interested from the get -go. Oh, yes. Yeah. My, uh, both our moms grew, like, grew things okay. whilst we were growing up. Okay. So we, we had that culture. It's just as you grow up, I guess you lose you it, lose but then it, we found yeah. it again. Okay. So um, then I got him to teach me how to garden. And then with time, I started learning on my own right. and started practicing. Gardening is, like, people get intimidated by growing food. And like, I don't have a green thumb. There's nothing like a green thumb. You just have to have the right knowledge. Right. And you have to have the confidence to try. Right. And so right. even me, I'm still working on my confidence because mm -hmm. like, I'm like, oh, maybe it'll fail. Right. you know. Right. So once you try and you have good soil and you have the right knowledge, mm -hmm. it will grow. And if, if it fails... You learn from your failure. Yeah, I actually and, have yeah. a saying that if the plant fails, it's not my fault. It's yeah. the plant's fault. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how, you know, I started. I started. Was there a difficult transition going from baking into this? Because it's complete, two completely different things. I was like the main baker. Right. Um, I didn't have an employee until um, two months before our business crashed. Oh, so no, I, got, okay. I got my first employee. Right, okay. And then we had to let her go because, yeah. because of the economy. Mm. Um, so we were doing it side by side. Okay. So my baking was not like, throughout the whole week okay. it was like more like you know three official days and the other days i'm doing something less right. so it was very compatible okay. um to do it with it um but letting go of my bakery was of our bakery yeah, was hard, hard. Mm. Yeah. i mean if you probably go on social media or twitter or something it's called everything baked okay. and people know us and people are very sad yeah. that, but i had to let it go because it's not sustainable yeah. and we're about you know i'm not going to be yeah the back cost of flour and all that and yeah. oil it's just crazy yeah. i can't run a business like that so it took a while for me to just mourn the loss of my business and say you know what it's okay we're full-time gardeners mm -hmm. now and full-time i guess content creators yes, yes, <laughs> and hopefully yes. we make an income from that as yes. well and okay. also from our land as well okay. yeah i think we're sort of in that transition period where right. we are trying to figure out how to make money from this. this as well yeah. yes yes i mean you sound so knowledgeable already so you could easily <laughs> teach people oh yes how to do yes it, and that would be a way so are all these plants that you put in or there's some from your grandfather's <laughs> time the plants here it's actually a bit interesting some are self-seeded oh, so okay. like the, a lot of the palms here are accidental oh, okay. but they are actually the descendants of my grandfather's yeah, palm plantation really which nice. was sort of up there Oh. Yeah, so I guess the birds and you know things yeah, brought the, brought some of them, them in. Okay, yeah. The plantation okay. doesn't exist anymore, but mm -hmm. this is what I guess is left of it. Okay. Um, we also have some bananas that my mom planted. Mm -hmm. We tried to keep 
the bananas going off the steam. And they're, they're the best delicious. tasting oh, bananas really? in the whole of Ghana. <laughs> yeah, Nowhere really you nice. can find really? those bananas. They're so good. Right, yeah. right. What have been some of the things you have enjoyed about this whole process? I tried to educate people because I was also not educated about, you know, living sustainably mm. with the land before mm. and all that. I've, you know, it's, it's, I've come a long way. So... First of all, I think I enjoy the greenery. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the trees. I can't imagine living somewhere in, a, in an apartment yeah, that there's more. no green. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine I think living... this place was a real sanctuary during COVID Exactly. As well. oh, right, so okay. where people were feeling cooped up yeah. in the house, even though our house is still very small, but we had all this, all this space, space fit, and we yeah. could come out and just relax mm -hmm. and just, you know, breathe. Mm -hmm. So we, I definitely enjoy the sanctuary that the trees provide. Mm -hmm. and just It's just nice. Yeah. You just feel... Good. The yeah. air mm -hmm. is better. Is. Also, I've always been uh, a fan of doing things myself and mm -hmm. learning how to do some um, do things. So, one of our sustainable um, principles is learning how to do things ourselves. So instead of always having to rely to uh, on buying stuff mm -hmm. from the store, mm -hmm. like I make soy milk myself. Oh. Yeah, these are things that we did growing up. My mother did yeah. it, but slowly, slowly, I think you know we're losing those recipes or yeah. we're losing those. Um, principles mm -hmm. so we make soy milk myself um tofu myself mm -hmm. i make i started making um, vinegar. pineapple vinegar i learned that wow. a year you guys are not gonna need the shop <laughs> very i'm not right? i've not bought vinegar in a long time right, you know right. so i don't buy we don't buy sesame i don't buy peanut butter right. i make it myself mm -hmm. we're growing peanuts so our mind is how can we um grow some of the things that we use on a daily and yeah. Yeah. how can we be self-sufficient yeah. so mm -hmm. i've always loved doing things myself mm -hmm. i've always loved not being dependent on something. It's like, if there's COVID right. and you can't go out or have yeah. access to this, mm -hmm. I should be able to make something similar, yeah. you understand? So yeah. that's always been uh, my principle. So mm -hmm. I enjoy yeah. making stuff for myself. Mm -hmm. And now that I have a daughter, we have a daughter, I mean, it's just a joy. Yeah, I, I think we've both been like, yeah. right from the beginning, big DIYers. Yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's such a joy picking a tomato from the garden, washing it off with salt and then giving it to her to eat fresh yeah. from the garden. Like her first um, taste of mustard greens was from our garden. Right. Her first taste of okra mm -hmm. was from our garden. Her first, I mean, things that I didn't She's eat. She's going to be very picky. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, things I didn't eat as a child. Right. She's getting to eat it because, yeah. you know, we're learning how to grow mm -hmm. them. So that's that's such a joy to to um, experience. Okay, that's good. Do you have anything to yeah, add? Yeah, I, I, I think the other thing that I enjoy about all of this is, you know, besides just the greenery, is having never been bored you know mm -hmm. having a lot to do. to do there's yeah. always something to do here oh, yes. you know the scenery is always changing the plants are always changing yeah. you know i mean i mentioned earlier before the camera started rolling mm -hmm. that you know climate has changed the plants are already reacting to it right. you know or not the climate but the, the weather the weather yeah. You know? yeah just a couple of months ago the place looked a bit different so mm -hmm. it's very mentally stimulating, stimulating yeah. you know yeah. it just yeah, it just stimulates your brain mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you want to, like, come out here and read a book or write, or in the morning, you know, one of the things I'm trying to do these days is, like, have breakfast and sit in the shed and just look out into no, the it's garden. Beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely... I mean, I've only been here for, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 <laughs> minutes, and I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's in a car, you know, it's like, once you shut that gate, mm -hmm. you know that you <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But once you go out and you're back on the highway, yeah. the chaos again. But it's so... And it's not even that loud in here, even mm. though you're so close to the highway. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the trees are all exactly. shaded. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful. You guys have he a little piece of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's true. Your reaction is, we get this quite a, a bit. A lot. Yeah. You know, people come into the house and they are really surprised. Yeah. That, you know, this just, you know, and they mm -hmm. see the highway and they're like... This is yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense, but you guys have done really well. Really Thank you. Nice. Yeah. And what have been some of the challenges I guess you've gone through trying to set this up? Apart from like we being next to the road, it's a lot of environmental challenges here. Yeah. You know, we have I guess due to like a lot of unplanned development in the area. Mm. We have a lot of neighbors, mm. you know, that are doing things that are not really environmentally friendly. friendly yeah. right? okay. So we've got like a timber yard close to us. Mm. We've got like little shops. We've got all sorts of things. And I mean, they're doing all sorts of things that are polluted. One of our biggest challenges is plastic. Yeah. We have plastic mm. flying in all the time, oh. all the time. So you see me going around like picking plastic, <laughs> you know, trying to get rid of it. Um, then there's noise pollution, mm. huge. We've tried our best 
to you know try and reduce it we've got like um these indian mass trees okay. which are really good at absorbing sound okay. we've got all the trees in here which mm -hmm. reduces the sound mm -hmm. but it's still loud yeah you know when they have like funerals mm -hmm. it's loud when they're doing like their business stuff in the morning mm -hmm. it's turned a bit into like circle Exactly. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, in the mornings, I promise you. Wow. In the morning. Yeah, there's a lady who yeah. makes a business announcement like from nine to ten, yeah. and the first time she set so it it's up, like a wake up call. <laughs> it was so loud. She set up like a huge, long yeah, tower, these like with towers. three, yeah. I don't know, speakers. We yeah. had to get like commissioner. What, what, right. what, what would you have to get? Something. Noise, something, something. We had to bring in a somebody yeah. to come and speak to her yeah. and say hey yeah. you we have, have to it take it yeah. the, i think the environmental protection yeah. agency that's what i said we wish we could just teleport our yeah. land and somewhere yeah. more yeah. safe yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I i guess it's one of the challenges with like an urban, urban farm yes. stage yeah. right so it's yeah. like you've got this piece of greenery juxtaposed mm -hmm. to a lot of this yeah. in the city yeah. right yeah. and depending on where you're in the city your challenges will be different exactly. and that's what we have here yeah. you know mm -hmm. another thing we have and we've had this for I guess 20 years maybe mm -hmm. is we've had constant pressure from floods oh, right okay. yeah mm -hmm. so what's happened is i mean when i was little this highway didn't exist mm -hmm. it was just a, it was a regular road i guess okay. you could say and uh once the highway was constructed i, I don't think a lot of thoughts went into the drainage, drainage. systems associated mm -hmm. with the, the road system mm -hmm. and so that's affected a lot of the you know the drainage in the area right. so over time it's gotten worse mm. I, I think the drains that they do have are you know silted up but they're not like open drains right. you can't have like an area committee go in and say we are you know taking all the silt out right. or desilting the right, gutters right, they're like right. under the highway okay, you know yeah. so it's a very complicated mm. thing and i think it will take a lot of like maybe lobbying talking government right. action okay. to do something yeah. about it yeah. and so we've had to like make uh find a way around it mm -hmm. so the house actually has closed drainage okay. you know nothing actually leaves the house in terms of drainage so in the middle or in the center of, of the house we have actually like a drain mm -hmm. and it's actually a blessing because um it actually feeds our trees oh, when it rains okay. so when the rains come in um all of the water pools into the center mm -hmm. of the yard mm -hmm. and it sits there for quite a while mm -hmm. if if it's too much, we'll actually pump it. Mm -hmm. We've got another strip of land just behind us, okay. which is open. Okay. And then we pump we excess pump water there. there. Yeah. But a lot of the water actually stay and will percolate into the ground within two or three days. Okay. And this recharges the water table. Okay. And a lot of the trees here love it. Yeah, you know? like the palms and the coconuts. Yeah, they absolutely love like okay. the water table re being recharged with all of this water. Okay. And in my learning, my recent learnings about tree systems, that's actually a thing that people do in places um, to set trees up and mm -hmm. to make them drought resistant, drought tolerant. Oh, okay. You can actually create what they call swales, swales okay. you know, and they're like sort of like, they're like gutters, but instead of taking water away, mm -hmm. they store water for a while mm -hmm. and they allow water to seep into the soil. Okay. And it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. And in Ghana now, we have problems with water, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people are, you know, thinking about boreholes yes, and things yes, like that. Yes, yes. But not a lot of people understand how the system works, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. in order to actually get a borehole to give you water, mm -hmm. there has to be underground water. water right? yeah, that's it. You yeah, know? Yeah. And how does this water get there? Mm. You know, it has to actually soak into the ground oh, first. Okay. Yeah. You know, and these underground aquifers can mm -hmm. actually run out. So if everybody in Accra started using a borehole, borehole. We'll, we'll run out pretty quick. Oh, right, you know, right. Especially because in Accra, most people don't actually soak rainwater into their soil. Yeah, they actually let it go. Oh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's either concrete or tiled right. apartments, right. you know, yeah. and that actually affects the amount of water in the ground, in the ground you know. Okay. And I guess if I'm to sort of jump into what we have here, we also store rainwater. We've got oh, okay. a rainwater thing. I didn't do that. My grandfather originally, when he was doing his agriculture thing, there was a time, I think it was a champong. They had something called Operation Feed Your Tail. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was I've a champong, maybe before. somebody yeah. like that. It was that. a champong. Yeah. I think so. And uh, he put a fish pond okay. <laughs> in the house and it didn't really work out. But he left Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, when he retired and things weren't working out in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And my dad was running a, a recording studio mm -hmm. and Ghana was a cut him off because of some military problem. Mm -hmm. okay. And so out of the, the need mm -hmm. for water, mm -hmm. he decided, why don't I find a way to just connect my gutters mm -hmm. to the, mm -hmm. the tank? And that was the beginning of rain harvesting oh, in this okay, house okay. and so i grew up with rain water okay. and we still do rain water till today mm -hmm. you know we have a simple filtration system mm -hmm. it's amazing clean water mm -hmm. and i find 
a lot of people are into boreholes and want to mm -hmm. do boreholes but i think if you're thinking about water and a sustainable way of getting water mm -hmm. rain harvesting is an option right even if you can't put in um you know like a, a concrete tank mm -hmm. you can still do like a poly tank mm -hmm. a big tank right that right. kind of thing yeah I and, think it's, yeah. it's more so popular. I think one of the things that is already a benefit if you try rainwater is it's much easier to purify. Oh, okay. Yeah. Boreholes are notorious for being very difficult, to, mm. you know, to actually purify. Sometimes you have a bit of salt in this. Right. You have to get all sorts of treatment systems mm. to actually get it to good standards, right. drinking water, right. or use it. And sometimes it still isn't quite good, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. But rainwater, if not for just a few impurities, it's actually even good as it is. Oh, yeah. okay. You yeah. can drink it as it is. Yeah, I mean, oh. if not for the impurities, right. it's okay. actually very soft water. Okay. It usually is really good. Yeah. You know? So all you need is a simple filtration system. Okay. And for drinking, simple chemical treatments, okay. you know, it's very, very, very easy to treat. Mm -hmm. really? I think most people that drink our water are actually quite surprised. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll it's try it today. Really, <laughs> it's, it's really good. But did really it, does it have to rain a certain amount in the year for you to have enough? Yes. So you, you do have to do a bit of calculation. Okay. But to be honest, most homes have enough roof surface area okay. to capture all the amount of water they would need. Oh, and okay. we are blessed in Ghana to have two rainy seasons. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you don't have like massive amounts of storage, um, you can probably get away with it because of the two rainy seasons. Okay. You know? yeah. So you do have to a bit of calculation okay. i think here we are on site we store about ten thousand gallons of water oh, okay. okay and we are planning to expand mm -hmm. and get some more tanks okay you know in addition to our tank that's there already right, we'll get okay. some poly tanks as well mm -hmm. and that's mainly because of the, the agricultural stuff we're mm -hmm. doing we want more water mm -hmm. and if you want to agriculture rainwater is also a big blessing mm -hmm. because it's basically like the same stuff that right. they already want well, yes, you yes, know yes, yes, yeah yes, yes. I mean. instead of like tap water mm -hmm. or, you know Okay. Well, I'm ready for the tour. <laughs> but before we go, do you ever have to leave this house? Like, do you have to go anywhere? Because you seem to have everything. Like... We're mostly home. You're mostly home. Yeah. yeah and I then we do have a place we hang out on yeah. Sundays yeah. where okay. we go for a swim. Yeah, we chill oh, a bit. Okay. Yeah, but since we had our baby, um, it's okay, been yeah, tough. Be yeah. So we're more, still, yeah. you know, getting, uh, I think we're getting to that point where we might be going out okay. more frequently. But we do go out. I, okay. I'm more of the, I need to commune and with okay, my girlfriends yeah, and okay, my okay, uh, yeah. Tom is like a he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's happy yeah. Here. It's, it's difficult to get away from this place <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happy that's, to be that's here. what I'm asking like, yeah. yeah okay well who's leading us in the tour uh, Tom. Uh, Tom. Tom, Tom Tom is our okay, tour guide all right so we, we'll start with our first group of beds mm -hmm. here we've got our tomatoes so the way we decided to go with our crops this year is we're trying to grow all our staple veggies so we've got tomatoes in here. It looks like a big mess, but there are carrots underneath, there are onions oh, in and there. there's some tomatoes on there. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We've been harvesting these for a while now, haven't we? These are yeah. interesting shapes. Yeah, they're grape tomatoes I got from the farmer's market like oh, two years ago. Okay. So we've been saving seeds and planting them again. So they were, it was a hybrid, so oh. it's gone back to like one of the tomatoes that it was paired with and with, it's just ah. it just keeps changing oh, and all that so how fascinating yes yeah. yeah, so the second bed is basically the same as the first oh, okay. but there's a time difference of like five weeks oh okay and then we move to the third bed mm -hmm. it's the same thing oh, okay. but then it's spaced again another five or six seven weeks you something that like that. Yes. yes so we planned that we wanted to keep getting like a harvest okay. continuously oh, so okay. once this is done you can already see here on the second yeah. bed we've got fruits coming so once we have irrigation or it's raining, we'll never run out of tomatoes. So it just keeps growing and growing. So what we've been doing is, as we need tomatoes, we go and pluck, 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 oh. pluck, pluck, yeah. And I think there are three tomato beds and mm -hmm. our mindset was, if you have basically three months to get your tomatoes, mm -hmm. by the time you're done with your first, you can come back and replant. Right. Yeah. So we'll see how, how it goes. But yeah, basically <laughs> it's working. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then this bed is our pepper and okra beds. Oh, yeah. yeah. Massive okra, hey. Yeah, they're, they're at the end of their life, so we're leaving these to to, um, seed. to oh, save seeds oh, from. Okay, okay. So we'll plant again. But we have some peppers there. Yeah. Peppers are. Are they know, spicy? Oh, this one, yeah, habaneros. Right. Okay, so they're, they're spicy. Okay, yeah. So we, we've happy. had a lot oh, of see, bad luck with the bell peppers. Oh, bell peppers. Yeah, yeah they're but, not but very we're hoping easy to that grow. if we save seeds from these guys, okay. they will like the soil next time. Yeah. And then this this is like an experimental area. I'm just sort of growing different things here. We do like, I think, beans and corn, and corn here. So we run a lot of experiments in this area. So okay. we've grown, I think, um, 
millet here before. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time and where chickpeas. I was trying to grow, yeah, chickpeas. Mm -hmm. So it's just an experimental area. Okay. What has been the easiest thing to grow so far? Whoa, I, I think tomatoes yeah. are. Yeah. Tomatoes okay. are good. Okay. Yeah, like eggplants, that eggplants. Mm -hmm. Like you can see it's a, it's a plant, but like only two fruits. Right. Yeah, so right. we're saving, uh, we're, we're keeping it to mature so that we get seeds. Okay. And, and hopefully we... the next round okay. will do better. Tomatoes yeah. can disappoint you though. I mean, mm -hmm. there are diseases like there are blights and wilts that affect them. And we've encountered them a number of times. But the way we deal with it is just plant more. Okay. Exactly. You know, that's just how you do it. What and are these? you get more. I don't look. This is random. <laughs> this is we it's don't know pepper, what it is. Actually. But it's a pepper, but we don't really know what pepper. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was I don't a know whether it cross pollinated with some green something pepper else. or something. Because yeah. it's meant to be maybe like a jalapeno or something, okay. but it's really big and so like you, we are very puzzled. <laughs> this is where we actually start seedlings. Okay. So this is our seedling starting area. This was my yeah. baking trolley. Yeah, yeah. So we repurposed exactly. my yeah, baking yeah. tools, exactly. my baking trays. This was upstairs there in our bakery. And so, yeah, we're using it for gardening now. Everything. We are probably going to start some seeds soon. So okay. usually we have a group of seeds and we fill this and then we grow them and then we move them out. Okay. Yeah. So we'll probably do that in a few weeks. And then we just have an extra area, so we are maximizing our space. Oh, our space. Yeah, these growing are more things. Tomatoes? Yeah. No, the, no, these, the, are, the these are not ones, right? cherry. They are they're grape. Cherry, grape. Yeah, grape but you can see they've taken a different shape yeah. compared to that one. So yeah. it's very uh, versatile, and I don't, is, it, is it because of the genetics? Yeah. Or something? There's a lot of when you usually save seeds mm -hmm. from like a hybrid tomato, mm -hmm. it's from like two different sets of parents. Oh, so okay. when you plant them. A lot of people think it's a disadvantage, yeah, right? So farmers don't want to plant them again. They okay. want the exact same thing. Right. But we embrace that. Okay. We're like, you know, let's plant it. Maybe we'll get something that's very interesting. Right. Okay. And so you see they're exactly the same group of seeds as what you saw there, but they look completely different. Yeah. You know, and they're very yeah. sweet. I really actually, love these ones. Yeah, they, are, they actually yeah. look They sweet. are best yeah. tasting tomatoes. We, we're okay. growing um, a tomato called Abale and all these fancy yeah. tomatoes I got from the UK, the seeds and all that. Those ones taste don't taste good. good. Yeah. They look this really nice though, but they good. don't taste. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and the other ones, I mean, they look good and they are big and juicy, but they don't have not, flavor. Not a lot of flavor. Oh, right, they're not okay. tart. They're not sweet. They're just like blah. This is so flavorful. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Cuban oregano. I got oh. this uh, like two, three years ago from. I got a seedling. Okay. Um, and it, we've been growing it since. It grows like a weed. Oh. Yeah. It's very it's resilient. Actually tough. Yeah. 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 It's tough. It's a tough. So one. if anybody in Ghana wants yeah, to grow herbs. So, yes, yeah. thick and furry. If anybody wants to grow herbs in Ghana, starts with Cuban, it, yeah. it will take over. Okay. And it's but I, I would say plants it in a pot still. Oh. Like the ones here. <laughs> oh, no, it will actually take over. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you use this to cook? Oh, anything. You anything? could. It's, it's, it's like oregano. Okay. Yeah. It, it's a little more medicinal, in yeah. my opinion. Oh, yeah. So you need to use a little less. Okay. Yeah, but it has a very similar taste. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then also, they say that it's a, a snake repellent as well. Oh, yeah, so okay. that's what they say. Yeah, so okay. we just plant it for cooking. Cooking, yeah. yeah. Can I take a piece with me when I'm going? Sure, oh, yeah. you can. Yeah. You can actually I think I can keep get some, alive. Yeah, yeah, some things. It roots so easily. <laughs> right. yeah. So tell And us. then we have another set of three beds. Out. This is actually my last in the set of three. Okay. But it's the same principle as the tomato lane, mm -hmm. the tomato drive. We have three, four, I think, uh, months to grow things like cabbage, lettuce, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so what I do is I'll do the first sowing, mm -hmm. and then a couple of weeks later, I move to another bed. Yeah. So this is the third bed, the most recent bed. But if we move further, you see that there's the one that's a little older, mm -hmm. and then finally there'll be the oldest one. Okay. And we'll see what that looks like. Oh, you, you forgot about this bed. Yeah, we actually grew beans. We grew oh. soybeans. Soybeans yeah. in here. Oh, we we yeah. harvested them. I have a few them. seeds left. Yeah. Over there, okay. and we're going to replant yeah. okay. in here. It's so still part of my that you buy in the market. Right. You used to make soil milk and um, tofu. It's okay. one of our staple foods, so oh. we wanted to learn how to grow it. So is yeah. it easy to grow? Yeah, yeah, it was. It yeah. was very you resilient. Just, you plant it and yeah. forget about it. You know? And so you can also easy. eat it fresh as like you can cook it when it's green yeah. uh -huh. and cook it's really it, and nice. it's really nice. Oh, okay. It tastes like groundnuts. Yeah. Yeah. If you look, there's actually a trend. Everything you grow is actually our grocery list. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So we actually like took our grocery list and said, hmm. Could we actually grow all the things? And, and pretty much, yeah. Mostly, yeah. yeah. We're, we're a bit of a plant-based family. We oh, don't eat a lot of meat. Yeah. We eat meat occasionally. Okay. So with the exception of meat, we're growing all the things on our grocery list. Yeah. You know, so cabbage, yeah. carrots, onions, yeah. garlic, ginger. ginger. And you see all of that as we move. Okay. Yeah. 
Would you ever rear animals at any point in time? We did plan to put some chickens. We yeah. have a little space along the back. Okay. And we plan for that, but we've taken our time with it. We don't know if we'll do it yet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So this is Becky's herb section. Yeah, this is herb, my herb, herb raised bed. Are these cabbage? Yeah, I, I forced these things. <laughs> you know, I was begging here. They're I had some extra like, seedlings. Uh, they just like ten ounces. Yes, <laughs> but they're there. Um, so parsley, and these are my marigolds. Um, and then basil oregano. This is like Italian oregano. Yes. So this is what oh, okay. you would probably see at a store, like right. dried. Right. Okay. And um, most of these are Mediterranean herbs. They don't like a lot of water, but you know we've managed to grow some of them. Mm. And that's just basil. basil yeah. This is like a weed that grows. This is boko boko. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. always popping up in the yeah. house. And then I think this is cilantro. This is chamomile. I'm still waiting for it to flower. Oh, more oregano, sweet, sweet basil, okay. and then just more. More basil. More, yeah, more marigolds. marigolds. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with the marigolds? So the marigolds are here to attract pollinators, like ah, butterflies. So during the day, okay. you can see butterflies coming okay. to patch on them. And, and that's so that if you have any plants like cucumbers that need pollination, mm -hmm. they will be able to be attracted and say, oh, there's a cucumber here. Right, yeah. Okay. And then also, they're also supposed to repel some pests oh. as well. They have a strong smell. Okay. so. Um, yeah, you could, and it it looked pretty. It does it's look nice. Pretty. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was edible. No, it's not. It's not edible. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, not I think edible. there are some some types that are, that but are. this yeah, one right. isn't. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. This is also yeah. another greens bed, and this yeah. So this is a little. Uh, I guess this is the teenager, the middle <laughs> guy, yeah. and then over here, this is the oldest set, oh. and the same idea I was talking about saving seeds. Mm. These have all been left bolts. So yeah. we have so many things here. I think we have different kinds of lettuces. Mm -hmm. I've been harvesting. These are lettuce heads. Oh. So once they bolt, mm -hmm. you have seeds in here. If you open this, you actually see seeds in there. If you wait too long, they'll actually pop open and fly away. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is what you put in the ground. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Yeah, it's also part of a sustainable um, principle to learn how to save seeds. Uh, so you yeah. don't have to buy them buy again. Them all the time. Yeah. yeah. And the more you save them and plant, the more they do they do better. Better, yeah, because yeah. they it's adapted to, to our place. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What do you call it? Adaptability guide. Adaptation. <laughs> Adaptation yeah. guide. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. everything here is the same. We have, I think this is arugula. Yeah. Arugula is a really nice. I really love it. It's a mm. good salad green, mm -hmm. and it's sort of just almost gets to the point where it's going to flower, oh, bolt, okay. and give us seeds. Okay. So I'm really excited about but saving uh, that. Nice. Yeah. And I'm leaving these as well. Yeah, these are all lettuces. Okay. All these heads here are lettuces, okay. lettuce. I think we have four types. We have one which is meant to be a bit red, but it looks green at the moment, but okay. it does have like some red patches on it. Okay. Then we have, I think, a romaine lettuce. Mm -hmm. Then we have the common lettuce that like we all we find in the market. Yeah. Um, I think it's called Eden. Okay. And then we have another one called Black Seeded Simpson, which is this one here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is the Ghana one, the Eden, the right. very popular one in the market. Okay. Yeah. So I find that the Ghana one goes to bolt and becomes bitter, bitter very easy, mm -hmm. you know, easily. Okay. So as they bolt and get old, they become very bitter okay. in taste, you know, and the Ghana one does that very right. fast. Okay. Yeah. So it's good to have different lettuces. Mm. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mint. <laughs> mint. Oh, you got mint. Yeah, yeah. Mint and a few strawberries we are hoping to see. Strawberry? Yeah. yeah these are strawberry, strawberry seedlings. Plants, these two. Yeah, oh, seedlings. Okay. We tried growing them from seed, but we failed. So we just got seedlings from someone who's tried them. Okay. And we've got seeds from that person as well. So we're hoping those seeds will be better. Okay. So Jasmine, we've um, named this place. We have to name this place properly, like with woods and things. This ah, is yes, yes. called Dovey's Bananas. Yeah. Dovey's this is, is my mom's name. Yeah. Yeah. Dovey's got a really good bananas. Yes, about. yes. Okay. So they're not, all of them are not fruiting yet. Yeah. They're still on their way, right. but okay. they're very good bananas. And I'm not sure what variety they are, but they grow really tall and they're ex oh. extremely sweet. They are bad for the market because they spoil really quick. Yes. Oh, okay. So that's why so that's people why don't grow it. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a little compost corner okay. over there. The interesting thing about compost is if you have like food that's spoiling and rotting and stuff, people are like, mm, this is a bit yucky and mm -hmm. stuff. But when you have a garden, mm -hmm. apart from like the nutrition, mm -hmm. What's interesting is that you actually have pollinators that come from compost. I know it sounds oh. weird. They're actually beetles. Sarsop is really disturbs a lot of people. It's mm. like, I have the sarsop plant, it's flowering, mm. 
never fruits. You know, what do I do? And it's actually because of a lack of pollinators. Oh. Sarsop is not pollinated by butterflies or bees. Oh. It's, it's pollinated by beetles. Oh, okay. And beetles love this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, decomposing so you material. If you yeah. if you, exactly. Or you okay. could have like leaves on the ground rotting mm. a bit, you know, and they will come around. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's another benefit to having your compost close to your garden. Right. Okay. If you can, tuck yeah. it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> So this area here, this is another island. We called, we've named this island Avocado Island. Okay. It is in anticipation mm -hmm. for avocado one day. Okay. Right. We planted a couple of trees in this huge mess. Mm -hmm. These are actually beans that oh. I'm growing here as a um, biomass. Oh, okay. Because I, I mentioned that this is most of this is lichen. Okay. And it yes. it's really the poor. And, yeah, yeah, really okay. poor. Mm. So I'm growing a lot of biomass, which will all be dropped back. Okay. And will help to refertilize the soil. Okay. But in the, the ditch or hole that's been dug out here, it's meant to be an avocado. Oh. Yeah, so we're yet to get the seedling. seedling yes. Yeah. Okay. We're, gonna, we're getting it soon. So we've got an orange here, another mm -hmm. orange there. Mm -hmm. And you can see the trees are really close. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the reason is these are all going to be managed. Right. I'm going to be pruning the trees and yeah. they're, they're not going to be very big. They're going to be about mm -hmm. five, six feet, seven feet at the, at the, at the know, tallest. So, yes. Yeah, okay. So the avocados will be a little higher, mm -hmm. maybe nine feet. Mm -hmm. And then the oranges will be like five, six feet. Okay. And so we'll have a staggered effect. Okay. So they can grow wider without competing. You know, I think it's called stratification. Okay. You know, different strata they mm -hmm. occupy. And it helps you to plant trees a little closer. Oh, to each other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then all the way across, about 10 feet across, mm -hmm. we have another lane on the other side. It's also got citruses. Okay. You know, I think it's got lemon, lime, and then on the far end, there's tangerine. Oh. Yeah. And then there's also meant to be avocados as the big trees mm. in between okay. as well. Right. But Jasmine, this is all like recent um, developments. Yeah. Yeah. This place was like, there was a big tree. I yeah. think there was These two, two trees. trees here. One, two, uh, yeah, so okay. we had to cut them down so, yeah. to allow the sunlight because this place was shaded. Okay. Yeah, so we were like, we have space. Yeah, Let's so utilize, utilize it utilize and it. grow yeah. trees that can give us food, yeah, you know, not just the breeze and yeah. good air. Yeah. So. That's why the trees are all like small mm. and all that. But you know, come back in three, three, It'll four years time. Yeah. 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 So this is, I guess, our orchard. Yeah. And this is, what we call this Guava Island. Yeah. So that, Guava Island, Avocado Island. island. Yeah. Okay. That Guava you're seeing right there, mm -hmm. interesting yeah. story, was planted just randomly. I, we think it's a bird. So we've had, oh, since we started. So you didn't put it there. No, so, okay. no we, we put it here, we put it in a pot okay. and then he transplanted it. But it was initially on the ground and it just popped up. Oh. So a lot of birds, you know, yes. plant stuff. stuff. So there's yeah, a popo yeah. right there. Yeah, all the popos growing ah, yeah. around. Yeah, we're all random. planted by birds. Yeah, yeah, and this is why I encourage Ghanaians to not concrete all of their house mm. and just like build just good soil. Yeah. Because when the seed lands, then yeah. they have the right environment right. to grow and then you get free food. Right. <laughs> I feel previously, I think the older houses tend to yes, have Yes, but I don't know. It's not, it's not very attractive to people now. Yeah. They want yeah, modern so houses. Get, whatever that means. Yeah. Right? I, I know. But I, I think there is a way, you know, like this, we can, I, I know it's about organization, yes. how tidy it looks. Yes. I think there's a way. Yes, to you know, combine the yeah. two. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So do you guys have any like cassava, plantain, those type of things? Yes, I, we, we, this is actually, I forgot to mention, the ridges in between here are in preparation for yams. Oh, for yams. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So all this biomass is just temporary. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, okay. it's to bring fertility into, into the soil. The soil yeah. yeah. And when it's the right time to plant yams, these will be yams. Okay. Yeah. We plan to do cassava in the harder bits because cassava can break up a bit of hard soil. Oh, okay. You know, so we'll do some cassava here and there. Which we have planting at the back at there. The back, oh, yeah. Very well done. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks to our ancestors. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Grandfather and yeah. Everybody else this is why people should try and live more sustainably yes. so that your grandchildren, your children can also, can also enjoy, enjoy and continue. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and, the and the trees are such a, a blessing because it's not just, you know, the shade. Mm -hmm. All of this mulch is mm -hmm. from the trees. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's all from them. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah, pull out a ground? Yeah, let's, let's have a look. <laughs> the first time so I, I think... saw a ground plant was when we planted it. Let's see if we can find a good one. How do you know I mean, a good one? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Lotto. Yeah. And the soil is actually quite tough these days. Mm. There's no rain. No rain. Yeah. We oh, have something. There you go. Yeah. Something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, some of them are actually really good. Yeah. And I lost a few more here. Fresh peanuts. Yeah. This will make some nice bald peanuts. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
We've actually boiled some before. Some before. Yeah. You, you got enough to boil. Yes. Yeah. Are they seasonal or they just grow whenever? I think you can grow them. Whenever. As long as you have, have a little. Yeah, as long as yeah, you have They aren't water. too picky on like, you know, needing so much rain. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, you can have can this. I eat it? Yes, oh, yeah, you, you can. can. You can they, eat they it They taste a bit raw. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they're okay. Mm, they taste raw. <laughs> yeah. They taste more beanie when they're not <laughs> roasted. <laughs> But we're safe, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> I used to, I, I, I used to eat them. I used to eat them uh -huh. like you know not too many. When my mom used to grow them as well. Okay. I think this is also unique because you guys are like a young couple as well. Yes. Because so, it's common when people are a little bit older, a little more experienced, they know what I guess is better for them. I guess. Yeah. So they tend to choose this type of lifestyle. Yeah. But usually people your age. Even even in the UK, gardening is for like retired yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All retired. Yeah. Exactly. This we is call sandy this lane. Sandy Lane, okay. and we're growing um, tomatillos. So tomatillo is yes. just this Mexican. I don't know if it's originates from Mexico, but it's a type of. It's, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's in the tomato family. No, it's it is. It's a cousin. Oh, okay. Sort of like oh. a cousin. So it's related, and it's related to, to tomatoes. Pisales. And this is some tomato from the UK. My friend brought me seeds from the oh. UK. It's a vining tomato. It's very okay. big. We're still. Okay. Waiting for fruits. So this is our Another last experiment. bed. This is actually our experimental oh, tomato yes. area. This is my bed yes. because I'm in charge of experimental. So we I'm call it experimental because we're not growing a lot of them. We wanted to see how well they would do. Yeah. So this is my prized. Um, it's called oh. Tiny Tim. So, so this is a real cherry. A real cherry. Yeah, tomato. and it's an heirloom. Oh, so. Um, so yeah, you can grow these in containers. So oh, okay. these are the babies. The yeah, flower. and then this is just some random flower. Mm -hmm. And then that tomato is abele, which looks impressive, but doesn't have a lot of flavor. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a market tomato. Like they yeah. actually grow this for market. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say yeah. these look like the ones you would see in the market. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. We're, we're not interested in growing it again. So oh, if if yeah. if, yes. if you want another reason to grow uh -huh. stuff, that's another reason because mm -hmm. you get more flavor. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, oh, more awesome. grape tomatoes. Yeah. This is also another tomato I got from there. Just a variety of tomatoes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is a, a, a it's called a dwarf tomato. So you see, it's shorter, mm, but it's but it's grown quite tall. Yeah. yeah. This one's quite tall. It doesn't taste great as well. It's oh, such a disappointment. Really? They're all yeah. Big yeah. yeah. Yes. They look, they they look, look nice. Amazing. They look attractive. Yeah. Amazing. But they don't taste good yeah. at all. So. And these look like some kind of pepper or something. Yes, this is, yes. Grape, this is a grape, but it's one. taking the shape of some type of habanero pepper mm -hmm. or something, you know. There's even Just one different diet. down there, a group of them, that I cross-pollinated, and oh, they even okay. have a different shape again. Right, right. Yeah. So you can see, <laughs> they look more like a beefsteak, but they're tiny. Yeah, and our famous sweet potatoes. The ones oh. that started The one we started with. Okay. You can see. All and around, and yeah. they've taken over, and we've never had they just keep coming back mm. like you harvest you leave a few and they come back and they come mm. back yeah. wow and we also eat the leaves as well i don't know if you know oh. sweet yeah. potato yeah. leaves are edible what do you yeah. do with it you you we if you, them you like use them like consumer oh, okay. so i don't buy consumer for them from oh, the market again i just come we and actually have consumer growing some yes <laughs> right, yeah right, right, right. But I, I use this to make to palava make sauce, sauce and, and you can use it as any green like oh, spinach or anything okay yeah. nutritious and edible so oh, very good really staple cool. food to grow. Mm, that's really, really cool. Right. You guys have done well. Thank you. Mm, look at this fun too. Is it, it is. Is it exhausting? Does it get tiring? It's, it gets tiring, but it's a good type of tired. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. also the, not the tired that you can't take a break from. You know, right. you yes. can say, oh, yes. no, I need yes. to do this. Okay, I'll take a break. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, okay. and then once you get like most of the foundational work, like Tom did, he did all our beds. Mm which was a lot of work because right, he, he didn't hire part. anyone right. to help him because the block work yes, yeah. he wanted to be meticulous and it's not, it's very hard to get meticulous workers. Yeah, yeah. Really work. So all that hard work, once it's done, mm -hmm. then everything is sort of like on autopilot. Yeah, you know, okay. you're just coming out to water, check your plants right. and then it gets easier. Okay. Yeah. okay. What do you guys want to go for this place? Do you want to um, start selling some of your stuff? Do you want to teach people only? Like what's your goal? All, all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. yeah. people I, are interested in do we have seedlings? Do we yes. have seeds? seeds? We want to have seeds that actually really make a difference. Like, remember I mentioned adap adaptation gardening? Yeah. We want to get to a point where we have really adapted seeds. Okay. So when we sell people organic seeds, yeah. they know, wow, like this plant is actually going to do well. Right, okay. You know, because it's already been tested. Mm. It's grown in like the poorest latrite soils right, around. Right, 
you know yeah. and i didn't show you this but at the other side there are actually tomatoes growing in the area and these are part of our sort of adapt adaptation okay. tomatoes okay. and they're not babies you know i i don't treat them well you know <laughs> you just, leave, just them. leave them yeah. you know and those are the, the tomatoes that if you keep growing them like that after three generations when i give you the seeds mm -hmm. even with a little bit of babying you have really good right, results right. and that's what i want to, to yeah. give people okay. you know and the same thing for all the other things we are growing not mm -hmm. just tomatoes but okay. tomatoes are like the gardener's you know joy right, right? right yeah. so tomatoes may be first mm -hmm. and then of course teaching and one of our goals and hopes is to also maybe touch base with more community and have people of you know mm -hmm. the like mind yeah. so we can exchange seeds yeah, okay. you know you yeah. can uh you give me seedlings i give you seedlings right, i give you seeds right. you give me seeds yeah. you know and when you do things in the community, I think it's always much more safe. It's Absolutely. a big safety net. Absolutely. You know, if something happens to this place, mm -hmm. after all the years of working yeah, on our varieties, yeah, yeah, where do they go, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. if there's like that kind of cross communication, a community spirit, mm -hmm. I think that also works. So we are hoping that even with social media, we can find that community Absolutely. as well. Yeah. I yeah. picked um, tomatoes for Jasmine to try yeah. here. So you could, okay. try, you could try this one. That one looks a little, a little more ripe. Okay. Mm. Fresh spring <laughs> tomatoes from Tom and Rebecca's garden. Aren't I lucky? <laughs> oh, I'm going to try one as well. Just one more. Mm. 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 It's tart, it's sweet. It's sweet. It's sweet and tart. It's really nice. Yeah. So fresh. So we like using this in our salads, mm. and I just I cook with them as well. Yeah, even my my stews and stuff, stews and, soups mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. There's a point in time when tomatoes become, became so expensive. Not very long ago, actually, mm -hmm. like two, three months ago. That was delicious. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys come make contact with them because <laughs> I don't know you might learn a thing or two. Yeah. All right. So uh, Rebecca, if people want to contact mm -hmm. you or they want to come speak to you guys about what you're doing mm -hmm. or they want to check out your farm or whatever it is, what's the best way for them to contact you? All right, so for now, we're more focused on educating people. So we're not yet opening the place to people. So if you want to learn more about what we're doing, because we're going to be putting up videos. We're on YouTube as Living Sustainably With Us, and we're going to be posting videos. We already have some of our shorts there. Uh, so subscribe if you want to learn more. And if you want to reach us, you could text me, uh, send me a DM on TikTok as well. It's also called Living Sustainably With Us as well. And I love replying DM, so <laughs> just send me a DM. <laughs> Lovely. Thank right. you. Thank you, too. You guys won't believe I'm in the middle of Accra, right? It's so beautiful. I've had such a nice time here. It's so chill. Now I don't even want to go home. <laughs> Anyways, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you would love to see more people that are doing this kind of sustainable living, I'll absolutely love to show you. So don't forget to follow your bliss. So now life is short. Follow your bliss. Now you pay a day. Follow your bliss. Now the best be a year and follow your bliss. Now then, my mother. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.